watching West Hartford Community TV. For the community, by the community. You're watching West Hartford Community TV. Can I get off? Welcome to What's Happening West Hartford. I'm Adele Clark and I am the host of What's Happening West Hartford, as you know. I uh, recently got a lot of uh, questions of people asking me what is happening in West Hartford. So I wanted to do a little segment before my uh, interview today all about what is happening in West Hartford. So to start off, I wanted to let you guys know this is a huge thing that we got here in West Hartford. Uh, Family uh, Circle, the magazine, voted us uh, number six out of 10 towns for we are the six best, best excuse me we are the six best place to live for families and they came up with a little motto which i think is absolutely hilarious and you want to know what they voted us as our motto is where city style meets village charm so we're a little bit city but then at the same time we're a little bit of village so you should be proud that you live in West Hartford since we're voted number six out of, um, I think it was like over 2,000 cities that came um, on this ranking. So I think you should pick up the newest family circle so you can hear about uh, all about West Hartford. And then they interviewed a family as well who gave their input on why West Hartford is such a wonderful town. I also wanted to let you know that Blueback is going to be having their concert series, which is pretty amazing. It happens every Thursday. It's a great event to bring your family you can sit out on the little tables or you can sit out on all the ledges and you get to listen to music and it's absolutely amazing. It's so fun to do with your family and it's free. What's better than doing something in West Hartford and it doesn't cost any money? Well, unless you want to go to Pinkberry or one of the other places that are near there. Or you can bring your own ice cream. And then also Elizabeth Park does an event in their place. Uh, it's either located right on the green in West Hartford and that's sponsored by Whole Foods and they have local uh, jazz groups that perform. And it also, they do it at the Pond House. If uh, you don't, if it's raining, it's at the Pond House. However, it's first come, first serve at the Pond House. So once it gets packed, they don't let anyone else in. So that's another free event. And that, what's great about the Elizabeth Park one, if you want to go with your family or you want to go with your girlfriends or a significant other, you can bring wine and just sit on the hill and listen to music. And again, it's free. So moving right along to adults, there's a couple of fun events that are happening uh, coming up. Right now, if you want to go to the, um, the Good Speed Opera House, uh, there's a wonderful musical that's playing right now. And somebody from West Hartford is actually in that show. Uh, he is one of the um, ensemble, which is fine. It's wonderful. It's a great show. And uh, it's Hello, Dolly. Who doesn't want to go see Hello Dolly? And a local performer is in it. And he was wonderful. I actually saw it a couple days ago in previews. And it's going to be going live on July 17th. And that's something you can check out. It's great. Uh, the, the Good Speed Opera House has been there since 1962. It's an old theater, but it's absolutely gorgeous. It has uh, all its old interior. Nothing's changed. And it's a cute little theater. It's nice. You can go have a glass of wine before you see the show. And they also have a couple of restaurants that are around in the area, which is really nice. And then there's also uh, The Winter's Tale, which is an outside Shakespeare that they're having at St. Joe's. And that runs July 25th through August 11th. So that's another little um, outdoor event. And moving on to kids. This is a great activity. Um, I know with all the weather we've been having, the tornadoes, the hurricanes, and we get stuck in the house. I know we've been stuck in the house sometimes for seven days, and 
we don't know what to do with the kids. And it starts to get a little busy. The DVDs don't work. The video games don't work anymore. Uh, These are activities, again, are free. And you can go to the library. Uh, this is Green Eggs and Ham, and it's a read-along. So for those kids that are going back to school and need to practice reading, this reads it along. So it, ha it helps you teach your child, and they're just listening to it. And by the end of the summer, they might not even need the DVD anymore. And it's educational, because I know we kind of get busy during the summer, vacation and camp and everything. We stay away from still incorporating education into our uh, daily activities. And then this is another one. This is um, adding and subtraction, but it's like a rock one. So again, it's got the audio CD and the book. So you can put this on, sit down with your child, cook dinner, but still your child's learning. So I think that these are like great activities for children to learn and be busy. And there's one other uh, activity that just started, I believe it opened last week, and this is on New Britain Avenue. It's one of those like trampoline parks. It's not a bounce house. It has, it's a huge stadium size full of trampolines. And then they have like a pit with uh, styrofoam uh, material in it so you can jump off the trampoline into the pit. And then just going forward into my next interview, Darrell Brown is a local basketball star who has his own camp at the Mandel JCC. And this is a great uh, camp. It's, a, it's, again, if you catch this towards the end of the month, you won't be able to uh, sign up. But this camp runs from July 15th to the 19th and then also July 29th to August 2nd. So you'll have to catch that, but you can sign up. It's still open. And Darrell Bound is going to be my next guest. So um, I hope you enjoy. And just to let you know, if you want to sign up with Darrell, he does personal training for kids, which should be pretty fun for a child to have a personal trainer. What's better than that? So this is exactly what's happening in West Hartford. So if you have any questions, just email me, or you can go on my website at whatshappeningwesthartford.com. Thank you so much. Hello, everybody, and welcome to What's Happening West Hartford. I have a wonderful guest with me today. I have Darrell Brown. Thank you for being here. No problem. No um, for you, for those of you that don't know Darrell, which you can probably tell, he is a basketball player. Yes, he's tall, um, and he's a local um, celebrity, I would say, because I said his name the other day, and someone was like, you're having Darrell Brown on the show? That I am. Um, so, Darrell, tell me a little bit about yourself. I know you're a basketball player, but give us a little rundown. Yes. Uh, born and raised here in New Britain. Okay. I uh, went to grade school in Hartford, and then I went to Kingswood Oxford School in West Hartford, um, pride in my, my pride and joy. And then after four years there uh, for high school, I went to Manhattan College in New York, okay. uh, 97 to 2001. Um, the school isn't in Manhattan, it's in the Bronx, which a lot of people don't know. <laughs> uh, it's actually in Riverdale. And after my four years where I played basketball, obviously, um, four-year player, two-year captain. I went on to play basketball professionally overseas. Oh. Everybody can't play in the NBA, even though it was my dream. And, you know, my goal was just to get out of basketball what I put in, mm -hmm. you know, and let basketball work for me. And for 10 years, I had a great career. And yes. I loved every single bit of it. You know, I got to see places and travel and get paid for it. You mm -hmm. know, I, I played in Spain my first year out. Uh, from Spain, I went to South America. I played in Argentina, wow. um, and then, then to Holland. I went back to Europe for a year. Then I went to Brazil, okay. a couple of years in a row in Argentina, and then another year in Holland. Then I finished up in Brazil. Wow! You know, so it was it was a great career where I learned a lot. You know, on and off the court. You sure. know, how to adapt to different cultures and different languages. I. I, t I learned Spanish in high school. I didn't necessarily learn it well, you know, but I, I took the classes and through my time living abroad and trying to adapt and live a culture, I actually retaught myself Spanish and learned Spanish, wow. speak it fluently. And living in Brazil, I learned Portuguese. A lot of people don't understand Brazil speaks Portuguese. Yes, you know, for the Olympics coming up. Absolutely. That's what you uh, need to study. World Cup, World Cup and Olympics, I'm hoping to get to both. We'll okay. See. I got family and friends down there. Uh, but yeah, so I semi-fluently, I can, I can really write Portuguese well, Brazilian Portuguese, because there's a difference. I speak it pretty well, too. I can get by. 
but it was just a, you know a great experience to be engulfed in that Abs- language and absolutely play and, the sports you know because it we're not always you know over the last 15 or so years we're not always looked at as the best country for you know whatever polit- political reason yeah and basketball wise it you know it's just it's one universe mm-hmm. and you're going to be an american in another country and they treat you like you're there like you're one of them and it that was yeah that was the best part you feel comfortable absolutely it's like you're home away from home absolutely now when you're playing in europe do you travel around just in that like in brazil and play teams there or do you travel to other countries that's a good question when i played in brazil because it never happened when i played in argentina no when i played in brazil we played so in europe they have the euro league and you know where you play within the continent other countries in brazil they have the south american league and okay. so when I played in Brazil the first time around, we played and we reached the, fi- we reached the finals, actually. You nice. know, so we played teams from Venezuela, teams from Argentina, obviously, a couple teams from Uruguay. Those are the bigger countries. You know, you have Peru, you have Chile. Those teams are a lot smaller. Mm-hmm. Um, but I got to travel and play. So it was different playing for one team from one country and going to another country, especially a country that I also played in. Oh, yeah. So they're kind of looking at me like I'm a traitor. <laughs> yeah. You know, but it was cool because we, you know, we made, we made it to the finals, but I didn't, we ended up losing to an Argentine team. And I played well and ended up getting picked up by that Argentine team the next year. Okay. You know, so the, the best part about the intercontinental play is, well, not intercontinental, but within the continent is... Um, other people see you and you get, like, drafted into other places. And, and so it's... You know, you're always, my mom told me once, you're always on your job. Mm-hmm. You, know, you, you never, have to you, be. You never know who's watching. So it was definitely a great experience. And Again, yeah. you have that second option. You know, you said not everyone goes to the NBA, but Absolutely. you probably had just as much fun being in another country. And and don't get me wrong. I would, if I could do it over again, you told me I'd make the NBA, I'd love it. Sure. But the opportunity that I had was priceless. Sure. You know, now, you know, like I said, hopefully I'm going to the Olympics and the World Cup. And that's because of the friendships I made while I was playing, mm-hmm. you know, and one of my teammates actually, a Brazilian came up to visit my other teammate who was an American. And uh, I didn't get a chance to see him because our timetable didn't match up, but you know, like they can't wait to see you. And now they're right. saying, well, are you coming back down for something and coming to visit? You know, it, it's just, it's cool. You know, you have uh, people in places that people would love to go to, mm-hmm. you know, like everybody, when I tell them I played in Brazil, they're like, Oh, I would love to go there. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going again soon. You know? Right. So it's fun. And you it's get good. to eat the good food because you know friends, which means they're family yeah. cook. Absolutely. And you get good food. And Brazilian food, Argentinian food, you know, it's all great. Everybody's food is different, mm-hmm. but it's good. Sure. In its own way. Yeah. You know? So it's fun. It's, it's definitely a great experience. So now my goal is to bring here what I've learned over the course of my life and career. Yes. You know, and. So I, I was appointed head coach at Kingswood Oxford oh, last nice. year. Okay. You know, so this was my first full year as head coach. I was assistant for two years. And my kids are great. You know, I just left practice. I love them to death and they work hard. That's great. And I think our lack of age gap, you know, is really beneficial to me because it's a lot of the things. You and can I remember, relate to them. Exactly. And I remember being a player and, you know, sometimes you play for coaches and you're like, you're asking me to do this. Could you actually do this? You know, so it's fun because I have some sort of validity. Not that I need it, but I have it from them. Sure. You know, and then obviously the the biggest thing is being a, a former Kingswood Oxford student, being an alumni, um, I, I pretty much know what they go through. Right. You know, and so, you know, when they want to come talk to me about school or something social or even the basketball part, I love that I can be there for them. Sure. And that's what you know, made me gravitate to the job. You know, you tell me I had that opportunity in a heartbeat, I did it. That's so you know? nice. I'm sure they have a lot of respect for you too, for doing what you did, you know, coming out, going out to Europe and then coming back and still right. keeping your roots at Kingswood. Absolutely, like it, it's home. And I've always been very thankful to them and they know this because every year when I come home from overseas, Kingswood was home. You know, mm-hmm. they opened the doors for me they let me use the gym, they let me use the weight room. And, you know, for that reason, whenever I was around, I always tried to help out the basketball program. You know, Mm -hmm. whenever I was around, be around, help them out, answer questions, you know, anything I could do just to show my gratitude, you know, because it, you know, Kingswood changed my life in a lot of ways and it made college a whole lot easier. 
Sure. You know, so it prepared me well, and I feel indebted to them. So I just try as much as I can to help them out. Of course. Now, do you um, do anything like in your local town of New Britain, or do not you Oddly, pretty much yeah, stay? I, I feel bad because I live there. Right. I've never because the problem for me is I never went to school there. Okay. You know, I went to grade school in Hartford. You know, K through eight, and then I went to Kingswood and West Harvard for four years. So, um, I mean, I'm, I have friends because I, you know, all my friends who grew up around me. They, I'm a neighbor in New Britain, but it, it's just I have never been able to really help because I don't, I don't. Really These are your roots exactly. right here in right. West Harvard. And it, and it, it kind of, I guess, when I say that, it seems bad, but it, it's not. It's not, it's not bad. intentional, right? No, it's not no, intentional. Not it's just all. because of you know where I was and where I went to school and. You know, it is. Which is fine. Right. Keep it in West Hartford. Yeah. I'm uh, proud. I'm proud. <laughs> and then um, I see that you have your uh, basketball yes. uh, right. shirt on for your camp. Right. Uh, so is this like a camp that you're doing throughout the summer? Yes. It's our second edition. Our Last year was our first year. I'm partnered with the JCC, the Mandel JCC at West Hartford. Uh, we have our basketball camps there. It's four weeks. So it's five weeks total. We have four weeks of grades one through eight and one mm -hmm. week of high school. Okay. Last year we did six weeks, two weeks of high school. I joke and I kid when I say that, but the high school kids are a little lazy. You know, they don't, you know, they... It's summertime. They, right, they like their <laughs> summer, so I understand. So we cut it to one week, and hopefully we'll get a, a good uh, a good number so we can have the camp. But the grades one through eight are intense. Great. The, like, the children, they go hard. Okay. You know, and so it's it's fun. It's It's just as much fun for us as coaches and staff as it is for the campers like okay. we look forward to it every day and their energy gives us energy to want to teach and they're they're really really willing to learn and i'm sure it, that's like what sense. you get you're like you know um, how you're not playing full-time right. anymore so you get it Adele, with the kids that's exactly what it is you they, know. They, they fill that void that and my daughter but they fill that void of that itch of basketball because i you know i'll be honest i you know i never knew what i was going to do when i was done playing you know, because you're so far removed from college, never really any work experience. So, you know, I always wonder, and then I go, I played it, and I've been teaching it since I was 14. Why not really turn this into a career? Sure. You know, so not between my camps. has that opportunity. Exactly. So between that and my business of basketball training, you know, I have big fundies of basketball training. Um, I just, I've shifted from player to coach. Okay. And my whole goal is to teach young girls and young boys what I know okay. about the game as far as footwork, you know, shot foundation, ball handling, you know, you name it. I'm trying to teach you and I, and I want you to have the opportunity to, to get out of basketball what I did. You okay. know, that's, that's my goal. You know, everybody should enjoy whatever sport they play and always use the game. Never let the game use you. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to. That's the biggest thing. Now, what's like your biggest advice for kids that, you know, sometimes you see kids and they think like, oh, I'm going to be a superstar in basketball. Right. I'm going to go straight to the NBA. Right. You know, what's your advice for kids that think it's all fun and games? Right. I, I've never had a problem with kids who dream big. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I never, like I always say, my, my phrase, I don't want to be a dream crusher. Right. But at the same time, if you have these big goals and aspirations, you have to put forth the work to accomplish them. Mm -hmm. And you have to also understand at any point, because I was one of those kids, that everything you want might not happen exactly how you want it to. But there's an understanding of failure and success. Sure. You know, failing is not trying. Success is doing the work no matter what the outcome is. You know, and so if the kids are dedicated and they are willing to go through the process, the ups and downs of it, you know, because there are tons of ups and downs, they're not just ups. And they're and they're willing to fight and work hard. That's all you can ask for. And right. That's what I tell my kids. It's we're not result oriented at KO. We are process oriented. Makes you sense. Know, you have to build towards something. You know. So we have we have short term goals, obviously, but we have long term goals as well. So any kid who has driven not just for basketball but anything, you have to you got to be dedicated. You got to have gotcha. passion for it. Mm -hmm. You know. That's that's the one thing I always preach. It's very important, the passion, and also you have to remember education too. Absolutely. And you had a great education Absolutely. going to Kingswood. Yeah. Kingswood, uh, and that's why I say I'm indebted to them. You know, I, and I'm not ashamed of the story because it, it was less about me as, as opposed as it was how difficult Kingswood was. You know, I didn't, it wasn't easy at first. I right. had a lot of catching up to do as far as the transition from grade school to, to high school. And so it set me back a little bit. You know, so at one point I was an okay basketball player. And then as I, gradually got better, you know, you become a D1 prospect. Now people want to see your transcripts. 
and my grades early weren't great, but they were getting better towards my junior year. Mm -hmm. So senior year, it took a lot of work to become eligible for my first year of college. Yes. And that year, because let me tell you, Kingswood, nothing goes on that they don't know about for mm -hmm. any kid. There's no. 500 kids in that school, and they know every single kid and their situation. That's good. And it's, and it's great. And so, you know, once the faculty got word of what was going on with me, everybody tried their hardest, whether it was helping me with tutoring, whether it was study hall, or trying to find me to help me out. They made it happen. That's awesome. I did the work, but they helped, and they mm -hmm. made sure. And that my gift to them was I go from not really struggling at KO, but making sure I was eligible and, and going through at the buzzer, per se, to getting a 3.2 in college. It's awesome. You know, and so it, it was something where that prep and the difficulty of the work at KO made college a breeze. Yes. You know, and that was with playing D1 basketball where it's, you know, highly demanding and there's not a lot of free time. I never had a mandatory study hall. They never had to check my classes. God. You know, so it was, Kings they were talking about Absolutely. Ex Absolutely. And, and more academically than they did athletically. Right. And I love saying that. And we, I still preach the same thing now. We don't really have a grade limit to play, but my kids won't play if their grades aren't right. That's how you know? it should be. Absolutely. And I, I think can't. that's a fight that they have right now with um, NCAA. I think they're talking Absolutely. about Clearhouse, it. right? Mm -hmm. All the time. And I, and I tell my kids all the time, I have tons of contacts. Mm -hmm. I can call colleges for you, but I can't call colleges if your grades aren't right. right. I went through it. So I'm telling you how it is, mm -hmm. you know? And so they, they know you know, what I expect of them. And they're willing, they're willing to meet that demand, which is, that's why I love my guys. Right, and that's, I think that's the same thing they do at all high schools, that you have to keep right. a certain GPA right. in order to play Absolutely. sports. At prep school, we don't, though. Oh, okay. Oddly. You know, oh, so it, okay. we put, which is great, I think, too, at the same time, we put an onus more on the kids. Okay. You know, to keep up their work. You know, every once in a while, you get one of them who doesn't. You know, so we have to help them out. Sure. And, which is fine. Just and a little so, kick in the butt. Exactly. And, and so that's, that's what we're here for. Because if we didn't have to do that, we wouldn't be doing our job. Right. You know, so. Nice. Um, now, just tell me also about what the clinics, how, what goes on during the clinics and so that I, people can look forward right. to signing up. Right. So our camp every day, uh, a basic day in our camp is you, you get there in the morning. Our camp is from 9 to 3.30. 9 to 3.30. Uh, from Monday through Friday. And so you'll get there, we'll let you, you know, because everybody doesn't get there right at 9. So we give like that 9 to 9.15 leeway where, you know, you can shoot around, you can get warmed up, get prepared for the day, however kids do. Yes. And um, once 9.15 hits, we stretch, but we do a nice dynamic stretch, which is different than static because you're in motion while you stretch, get the muscles going. I lecture, try not to talk too long. Uh, for, you know, a few of the drills that we're going to do during that morning learning lesson, um, and then we'll go through the drills. And our goal, my staff and I, is to teach the game. Okay. We want to really, really, really teach the game. But at the same time, we understand you got to have fun. Because kids can't really understand the whole point of teaching all the time. Because they're like, dude, it's summer. Yeah. You know, Why they, can't we play one-on-one? -on -one? We just want to play. Yeah. And, I, and I totally get that because I, I remember being them. But at the same time, one of my biggest joys so far in the first two days of camp has been a couple of campers I remember having last year, mm -hmm. how much better they are this summer. Sure. You know, and so that's the coaching side, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they really don't. I said that to one of the kids, he goes, really? I got better? You know, and so I, it's, a, it's a very thin line of making sure we get our point across and teach, mm -hmm. but also instill fun drills where they don't realize they're working. Right. But they're working on the stuff that we, we're drilling them on but it's in a more fun environment. Sure. You know, so that's the, that's the biggest, we're trying to trick them into learning. Of course. And then, um, the basic fundamentals. You absolutely. Have to. That's why they call me big fundies. Um, <laughs> and so then, and then we'll play a, a, you know, an hour or so of games okay. with all the teams. Mm -hmm. And then we'll usually go to lunch. So now you're already halfway through the day. Okay. Um, more different than most camps. We have a swim. Half hour. Oh, that's, that's our big nice. perk. So we have a swim half hour where anybody can swim. You can swim, Monday through Friday, if you want. There's no, you can only swim. If you swim, you have to swim every day. If you don't swim, you never get to swim. It's every day is its own day. Okay. Um, and it's while that's fun. going on, right, we have uh, the kids who aren't swimming. They're in the gym. There's coaches there. You can get extra help. You can play. It's a lot of free time because kids like that free time also sure. to shoot and play, like you said, one on one. Mm -hmm. They're two on twos, what have you. And then from two o'clock on, 150 to two o'clock on, because the swimmers get back at about 145. 
Then we'll go into another lecture where I try not to talk too much again. Okay. We'll do some drills and then we'll finish the day with games. Nice. Um, and usually our games are trying to instill whatever team aspect we taught during the day. Okay. You know, and, and my camp is built. Actually, I tell the kids all the time, my staff, it's our camp. Yes. My name's on it, but it's ours. I want you to feel a part of it. And so I have three standards that we have to live by, which are leadership, Okay. sportsmanship and hard work awesome. those three things we have to have no matter the outcome of the game no matter the outcome of your day whether you never make a shot or you make every shot I need vocal and visionary leaders like acting how you act we need sportsmanship at all times whether it's wins or losses you think you're not getting the ball enough mm -hmm. you think your teammates not doing something and then the the hard work we, uh, we challenge our, our kids every day, who's gonna be the hardest worker for that day? You know, sure. so now you have everybody working really hard. And the goal is, if you don't get picked as the hardest worker that day, you're right. gonna work that much harder the next day because you want that honor. Sure. And um, our kids have really stepped up to bat with that. And it's awesome. It's been great. I it's can't complain at all. So much fun. Well, I'd like to thank Darrell Brown for being here. Well, thank of you. Of course, we ran out of time. Um, I'll have some footage so that you guys can see how amazing his camp is. And uh, please check him out. He has a website. Your website is? For my training business, it's Big Fundies, B-I-G-F-U-N-D-I-E-S, basketball.com. Bam. But you'll see it on the bottom of the screen <laughs> right. so that it makes more sense. Yes. Um, he'll have all that information on there. And uh, definitely look forward to your stuff that you'll have going on during the fall. Is yes, we have a couple clinics. I believe we have a fall clinic. Uh, kind of before they start travel and then we have a holiday break uh, clinic so once they're out of school for the holidays in the winter we have another clinic and then another one for winter break in February okay and that's so, all on your website that's all on the website okay. and that's all at the Mandel JCC oh, our nice. proud partner okay you know, we're working well nice together partnership because they Absolutely. have a pool too uh, and it's great, it's great. <laughs> so thank you and uh, that's what's happening in West Hartford